In this video, I'm going to take a look at how to set up configurations in an assembly so that you can go from one state in the assembly to another. This is using the caster alternative, which is a project that those of you that already done the caster were able to use. And what I've done right now is I have a limit mate set, angular limit mate, for how far it can go back and forth like that. I've also got a limit set as far as the travel goes on the wheel back and forth. Those are both limit mates. Now the problem with that is that might help me as far as analyzing the assembly and say what can it do. But if I wanted to go into a drawing with this, I really want in the drawing for that to be straight up and down and for this wheel, this um, pulley tensioner to be centered on the part so that the drawing looks right. So when I'm in a position to look straight at the part either like this or like that, I want it to look as symmetrical and as regular as possible. So in order to do that, I've set up these conflicting mates and I can go over and take the limit angle and the limit distance mate. The limit angle is the one that allows it to pivot back and forth. The limit distance is the one that allows that uh, pulley to slide back and forth. I'd ha I could suppress each of those limit mates and then unsuppress the mates that control the um, fixed version of this. And you can see now that wheel is centered if I were to look around at the other side, it now goes straight up and down. So now everything looks right for the purpose of making a drawing. The problem is if I make a change in this, the drawing is going to change. So what I'm going to do is take advantage of these things, and I'm going to go over and create a configuration. And the configuration, by default right now, um, there's a single configuration. Anything I do becomes part of that configuration. So I'm going to say, let's take this one in which all these things are fixed. And I'm going to right-click and I'm going to add a derived configuration. And the configuration tab, by the way, is just three over from the feature manager tab. You go past properties and then feature manager. I'm going to call this floating as my description so that it indicates that the part is free to move. Pick OK. And now I've got two configurations, one of which is derived from the other, which means this is the parent configuration, this is the child configuration. At the moment, they're identical. So if I go back here, I get the same behavior, everything is fixed, as I get here. So what I want to do is make that one current, go back over to features, go back down to the mates that I've created, and I'm going to reverse the process that I just used. I'm going to suppress the two mates that fix this in place. Now you can see this is free to go around like that. This is free to go all the way around to the bottom. Then I am going to unsuppress the limit mates so when I've unsuppressed the limit mates, I still have a possibility of movement, but the movement is limited because I have an angular limit mate that allows it to go from that position to this position, slightly more than 180 degrees. And if I look at it like this, now I can still move these back and forth. So everything is free to float. If I go back to configurations now, that has become my floating configuration. If I redo the default configuration, look straight at this. It is now straight up and down. You can see that here. And I cannot move my wheel back and forth because in the default configuration those mates have been reversed. I go back over here now, the two limit mates, the limit distance and the limit angle have been suppressed and the two coincident between the planes have been unsuppressed. Go to floating, go back and take a look at the mates, exactly the opposite. Now, I'm going to make this, well, I'll leave it floating. What I'm going to do is create a drawing from this. When I make a drawing from this assembly, it says it's already one of the same name. Do you want to open this file? I'll say, yeah, let's open it up. Now, when it opens up, it's going to be based on a yeah, configuration fix referred to could not be found. I'm just going to say, okay, last configuration. Now when I go in to my drawing, I've got several different sections here on this drawing. If I come and take a look at this view right here, you can see that it's in a position where it's moved over to the side. The wheel itself is no longer centered. There's a little difference in the gap on one side and the other side. Um, the keyway is kind of poking out through like this. This is clearly not what I want this to look like. So what I'm going to do is to go and right click on a primary view, go to properties, and I'm going to say don't use the floating configuration. 
use the default or the fixed configuration in this. Pick OK. Now when I come back out, only the uh, elements that are common to the fixed configuration are the ones that are driving this drawing. So now when I'm looking at the drawing itself, straight up and down here, straight up and down here, the nut looks right. I come over here and it's clear that the wheel is now centered on that shaft. The woodruff key comes out in the right place. Uh, and you can see even this, I can find that the alignment there is done correctly. So that configuration allows me to go back to my original assembly. And in the original assembly, I can change back to my floating configuration and do anything I want because it's only the default that's being used in the drawing. Set it again, goes like that.